So sometimes in physics, we can't do things. And sometimes that's just an annoyance. But other times, it's an essential impotency. It is an uh, inability that is essential to maintaining the consistency of our physical theories. The classic example being quantum complementarity, in which nature is not obligated to give an answer to questions that presuppose you know both the position and the momentum of a particle, because you can't. Uh, today, I'm going to give a souped-up version of complementarity appropriate to quantum gravity, uh, also based on something you cannot do, and that I'm going to argue is essential to maintaining the consistency of quantum gravity and avoiding paradoxes. In particular, avoiding the firewall paradox, which for today's purposes you can think of just as the following. Alice, an observer, performs a certain computation on the Hawking radiation emitted from a black hole and then jumps in. Uh, that's not a paradox, that's a poor life choice. The <laughs> paradox is that it's not clear if we can consistently give an answer to the following question. What does she see as she crosses the horizon? For various reasons that I will not go into, there doesn't seem to be a good answer to that question. Um, there is an attempt to evade this, which is the complexity attempt, um, where people pointed out that in order to uh, the computation that Alice is called upon to perform is exponentially complex, meaning it requires an exponentially large number of quantum gates to implement and an exponential length of time. So the aspiration is that by the time Alice has finished doing this computation, the black hole will long since have Hawking evaporated and there will no longer be a black hole into which to jump and no longer be a paradox. This doesn't work for reasons explored by Bill Unruh and others. And the reason it doesn't work uh, is first of all, you can insulate the black hole while you're doing the computation, stopping it, slowing it, freezing it down, or you can pre-compute. You can do the computation before making the black hole. So I'm going to make a different proposal. Uh, it also relies on computational complexity, but it does not say that you cannot do the computation. You can. But instead, it argues that the computation is so complex, uh, for various reasons, that doing the computation renders the situation uh, completely different from how it, how it started out. Essentially, it renders the question of what Alice sees moot. Uh, why is that? It turns out that the computation that Alice is called upon to perform is a unstructured error correction. And the way you do such computations is that you simulate every possible thing that could have happened. In particular, Alice is called upon to simulate every possible history of the interior of the black hole, including every possible experience that Alice would have, any observer would have, including Alice would have as she falls into the black hole. So there's the sort of semantic meaning of the computation that Alice is, is called upon to perform, therefore summons into existence many virtual Alices, because many uh, people believe, including me, that a sufficiently high fidelity simulation of an observer is another observer of equal dignity with the original observer. So that means that there are now an exponentially large number of Alices if she performs this calculation. There is the original flesh and blood Alice, who remains outside the black hole ready to jump in. And there is the exponentially larger number of Alices who live in the virtual memory of the computer that she uses to do the calculation that she is called upon to do. Uh, therefore, the answer to the question, what does Alice see, is that Alice sees everything. Every one of these observers sees different things. Alice sees everything. And the original question is rendered moot. This suggests a new strong principle of complementarity in quantum gravity, that nature is not required to provide an answer to computations so complicated that performing them necessarily summon virtual observers. <laughs>